All right, we're going to get started here. Thank you all for joining us for today's Super Bowl 55 media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers safety Antoine Winfield Jr. A reminder to media, if you wish to ask a question, please use the raise hand function and please have your first, last name and affiliation displayed on your display name if you wish to ask a question. We'll get it kicked off. We'll go to Jory Epstein with USA Today. Hi, Antoine. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Thanks so much for your time. I've spoken with some of your teammates about the social justice initiative y'all have worked on, and particularly the mentorship program. Could you tell me about your experience with the mentorship program? And were you there for the MLK Day program y'all did? I was not there for the MLK program, but um, the mentorship program has been great uh, throughout the year. Uh, we would meet like once a week and um, get a Zoom interview or not interview, a Zoom call with the uh, kids. And um, it was great being able to build relationships with those uh, kids and learn about them, learn about their situations and just to be a leader for them, um, just somebody to talk to, somebody that we can um, give advice to and things like that. So it was a great program. Next up, we'll go to Courtney Smith with ESPN. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, so just kind of, you know, to piggyback off of that, we're in Black History Month now and, you know, over the summer with all of the Black Lives Matters protests, I was wondering if there were any songs or any specific artists that you were listening to that during that time that really motivated you or your teammates or your friends. It could be songs, you know, throwback songs from the civil rights era or just stuff that you were listening to then that really motivated you guys to get out in the community. Um, you said any songs that we any, any songs or specific artists? Um, I'm not sure of any songs that I listened to that got me motivated. Um, it was just more just seeing what was going on um in the society uh, as what got me motivated more than anything. But I don't think there was any specific artists or song that I listened to. Next up, we'll go to Joey Knight with the Tampa Bay Times. Hey Antoine, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, obviously, fans want to know, you know how you're doing physically, how the ankle's doing, and you've kind of got a difficult decision. Obviously, you want to play in this game, but you've also got a career ahead of you. So how how delicate a balance is this? <laughs> well, the ankle's feeling good, and I'm going to play in the game. Um, so it's not really uh, any balance that I have to think about. It's 100% go. Next, we're going to Carmen Vitale with Bucks.com. Hi, Antoine. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, apologies if you've, asked, if you've been asked something similar to this already, but with, you know, a whole season now under your belt as a pro and some bonus football as well, um, I just want to ask you if there's something specific that you've noticed between the college game and the, and the NFL game that was the biggest adjustment for you. I know you kind of knew what to expect, obviously, given your dad and everything that he's been able to impart on you, but what was the biggest adjustment for you and if it was unexpected or not? I would say the biggest adjustment um, is the mental aspect of the game. Um, physically going in, I already knew everybody's going to be faster. Everybody's going to be stronger. Everybody's going to be bigger. Uh, but mentally um, learning everything, I feel like was the hardest uh, transition from uh, college to the pros. But once you get it down, uh, it's a simple system. Um, but I, I would say mentally was the hardest part. Next question will come from Joe Person with The Athletic. Sorry. Hey, Antoine. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, um, just uh, doing a story. On, I'm, I'm from Charlotte here, doing something on Teddy Bridgewater. He's up for the Rooney Sportsmanship Award. Just, I know you've, you know, you know, haven't j just faced him twice this year, but kind of what, wonder what your interactions were like with him during those games against the Panthers. And did you get any kind of feel for, for what he was like as a, as a person in those situations? Um, playing him, I didn't really get a feel. Um, there wasn't really too much interaction that we had out there on the field. We were both just doing our job. So um, I couldn't really tell you much about uh, Teddy Bridgewater other than he's a good player. <laughs> be David Harrison from SB Nation. Hey, Antoine, congratulations. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so I talked to Sean Murphy Bunsen yesterday and I asked him kind of how he thought or what his thoughts were on your performance in your rookie year under Todd Bowles, uh, having come through his own rookie year under Todd Bowles as well. And I described you as a baller. And then one of the things he, he said is just how uncommon 
uh, your ad- adaptation to the NFL game and, and to the scheme has been. And then uh, go earlier in the week, Jason Light recounted a story where you stand on the practice field and was told that you were perfect, not making mistakes and, and all those things. How do you feel uh, coming out of your first rookie, you know, regular season, obviously into the playoffs, that you performed and adjusted the NFL life? And how does it make you feel to hear coaches and players talking about you in that way? Um, it, you know, it's, a, it's always good hearing that, but I know I'm far from perfect. Um, I know I made a lot of mistakes throughout this season, but I'm um, all learning mistakes, all growing from everything that I've learned from. Um, but throughout the season, it, it's been a ride, a fun ride at that. Um, but I'm, I feel like I'm still getting better. Uh, each game, each week, we're able to go out there and practice and study. Um, I feel like I'm just getting better and better each week. So season's been going well so far, but I'm still continuing to get better. Next, we'll go to Marla Ridenauer with Akron Beacon Journal. Yeah, Antoine, good to see you since the first time since the combine. Um, Coach Rapone was saying the other day about how you talked to your dad at night, just going over things. I mean, what are those conversations like? And do you almost feel like you're kind of like in this together since he never went to the Super Bowl? Yeah, for sure. Um, My dad is like another coach. It's just like having an extra meeting, but at home. So um, throughout the week, um, we're watching first, second down, third down, uh, going over situations and how I'm going to play different situations based on who we're playing. So we'll get we'll get um, at least like an hour in a day of film together, um, just studying the poem and him just giving me uh, tips and uh, clues on what I could do to play better or play different things and different looks. So um, it's been great having him because um, he's been a huge part of um, my success and being able to play at the, play at the high level. Next will be Andrew Keese with WTVT. Hey, Antoine, uh, not a lot of guys can say that they made it to the Super Bowl in their rookie year. Uh, and you hear about guys like Dan Marino who make it early and then they lose and they never, you know, they never sniff the Super Bowl again. Do you feel like you grasp just how special and precious this moment is? And also, can you tell me, can you pinpoint a moment in the season where you felt like, okay, I belong at this level? Um, yeah, it's very special to get here. Um, it's super hard to get here. I always talk with my dad about it. And he's like, man, enjoy it um, and go out here and win it because you never know when you're going to go back to the Super Bowl if you go back to the Super Bowl. Um, he played for 14 years and never went to the Super Bowl. So I'm really just uh, grasping everything and taking everything in. Like, wow, I'm in the Super Bowl, my rookie year, uh, which is incredible. But um, just got to make sure we do every- we can do everything possible to make sure we win it because we never know when we're going to be back in this situation. Next, we'll go to Mark Craig with Minneapolis Minneapolis Star Tribune. Hey, Antoine, I know your dad gave you the genes and everything, but uh, when it came to advice, what would you say is the best piece of advice that, uh, that your dad ever gave you? Something that maybe goes through your head as you're, as you're playing um, each game? Um, the best advice that he's given me, uh, he's given me a lot. Uh, my favorite one is um, just pretty much living in the moment and just enjoying the process. Um, not many people, oh, he tells me all the time, not many people make it this far. And um, just enjoy the process, live in the moment, and um, enjoy the experience and, and have fun doing it. We'll go to Alvin Whitney with CNN Sports. Hey, Antoine, thanks for your time, man. Um, I want to continue on the theme with your dad. Uh, what kind of advantage was it to grow up with a dad who was who was all, all, also on this level uh, for you to get to where you are? A uh, huge advantage. Um, you know, he started me off early. Um, I would be in the backyard with him doing uh, drills, same drills that he, were do- he was doing. Um, and throughout, like, my high school, he was still there pretty much coaching me, um, watching the field with me, and just getting me prepared to, to get to this level. And um, I watched him do it, and um, it was always great just seeing how he worked, how he – study film, how he would um, at night go and stretch and do his 50 push-ups and 50 sit-ups and just di- different little things like that I feel like um, is what got me here. And uh, just seeing his work ethic, um, I just tried to do my best to do the same things that he did. Next will be Joshua Allen from Bucks Report. Hey, Antoine, congratulations on this entire year, man. Uh, how are we doing? Doing well, doing well. Just want to ask, I mean, you came in here um, in a shortened off season with limited time, but you came in here with one of your best friends uh, in Tyler Johnson. How has that been going through this season and experiencing everything, the highs, the lows, and now on the ultimate stage at the Super Bowl that you guys get to share this experience together? It's crazy. Um, every time I see Tyler, I'm just like, man, like we in the Super Bowl, it's crazy because we both came into college together. 
and um, we got drafted on the same team together. Now we're here about to play in the Super Bowl. So it's uh, been an amazing experience to um, have that with one of my friends that, that I played together with at uh, different levels of the game. So it's been awesome. We'll go to Kalen Jones with the ringer. Hey, Antoine, how are you doing? Doing well. Appreciate you, man. Um, you know, you guys are a young secondary unit. You know, you're in your first year. How have you seen, you, you know, your secondary group kind of develop over the course of the year, in your opinion? Yeah, I feel like um, since we're a young group, we have a lot of uh, getting used to how each other play. Um, I feel like throughout the year, we've been able to grasp of how one other play, we could play off that. And um, I feel like we've just been getting get, uh, better as a group because we know how, uh, the other one is going to play. Um, we know like what to say to each other more and more. So every time we're out there practicing or in the games, all that experience, I feel like has made us better. Just being able to uh, feed off of one another and just feeling out how each other play. Next will be Colin Cronin with the Irish NFL show. Oh yeah, how's it going? Uh, greetings from uh, this side of the Atlantic in uh, Dublin. Um, as others have said, you you took to the league like a, a duck to water and uh, just had an incredible season. Um, but you you're not alone in that in that Tristan Worfs. I mean, both of you guys not just stand out rookies, but stand out in your position. Just wondering, like, um, is that a alongside your talent, your ability, and obviously Tristan's? Is it that down to the coaches and the players uh, around you as well? Can you repeat that one more time, please? I'm sorry. Sorry, just a, um, the 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 fact that there's two of you uh, guys at the box who are not just standout rookies, but standout players at your positions. Obviously, that's down to your talent, but is it also down to the players and the coaches around you that two guys who've just come in, not had mini camper OTAs, had such brilliant seasons? Yeah, um, it says a lot about the players around us first and foremost. Um, being able, we have so many vets on the team. So being able to just learn and just be under their wings, they taught us a lot. I know they taught me a lot, at least, just um, being on the defensive side of things. And um, it also shows how the coaches are um, in developing us. Um, we have great coaches over here um, from top to bottom in our organization. And so I feel like they had a lot to do with uh, our success of being able, being able to be on the field and putting us in the best position. So the, the our teammates and the coaches have, played a huge role in our success. We'll go to Leo Haggerty with It's Sports Magazine. Antoine, congratulations on getting there. Uh, a couple interesting questions. I asked Warren Sapp right before the Super Bowl in San Diego, the last time the Bucks made it there, tell me what winning the Super Bowl would be in one word. He said immortality. If you had to describe it with one word, would you use that word or would you use another word and why? Hmm, one word. I feel like one word won't even be able to describe the feeling of winning the Super Bowl. Um, it's so hard to get here. It's so much work to get here. I'm, I'm trying to think of one word to just put in all that feeling and emotions that I would feel after uh, uh, just winning it. Um, only thing I can go is just excitement, just pure excitement, pure joy. Joy. I'll go with joy. Next, we'll go to Jason Alex Fleming with the Florida Sun. Sir. How you doing, Mr. Winfield? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Uh, just fine. Uh, well, I have two questions, but I still want to ask you between you and your father, foot race, like I asked you at the Combine, who wins that? <laughs> uh, back in his prime, you know, right after the Combine, he, he was actually there, so I was able to talk to him. He ran faster than me in his 40 at the, at the combine, but we've had our fair races back in the day, and I won the majority of those. But if we're comparing uh, combine to combine, he got me on that one. All right. All right. So I see you and I see Tyler Johnson, and you're both making major impacts for the Buccaneers. You should have been defensive rookie of the year, but you know what? The season's not over yet. Can you describe to me how Tyler Johnson is benefiting from being around all these number one wide receivers. Oh man, that wide receiver room is ridiculous. Um, and I'm, I know he's already over there soaking up all the information in. I mean, you got those guys, some true bets and true goats in that room. So um, I know he's soaking up everything. So I feel like it's great for him to see that early on in his career so he can just build off of it. 
So we'll go to Fago Franklin with Pro Players Insiders. Hey, how you doing today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm hanging in there. What does Black history mean to you personally? And what historical icon impacted you greatly that you admire growing up? Historic icon. Hmm. Well, first and foremost, um, you know, I'm African American. Um, and both my parents are African American, same with my brothers and all my family. So uh, it means everything to me. Um, early on, my mom and my, or both my parents taught me the importance uh, and what it's like being black pretty much in America. And so it's, I already know what to expect, but, um, you know, that means everything to me. i um, trying to think of an icon. Can't really think of an icon right now. Next, we'll go to Martin Weisenberg with No Huddle. Hi, Anton. Here, Martin Weisenberg for No Huddle in Argentina. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Okay, I'm doing fine. Thanks. So... It was a challenging season, especially for rookies, but what are the things that you enjoyed the, enjoyed the most for a, of your first season in, in the NFL? Uh, just being able to play football. Um, you know, I love playing football, and playing football itself is, is what I've been enjoying the most, being able to practice, being around all the guys. Um, I've just been enjoying just playing football. So we'll go to Peter Carline with the Daily Mail. Hello. Um, I just wonder if you could talk about the, the physicality that Devin White brings to practice and on game days and what it's like having him and Levante David in front of you. Yeah, those are the uh, two leaders on our defense. Um, I remember first coming in and watching those boys work, and I'm like, man, these, these dudes are something serious. You know, they're, they're big, they're fast, physical. Um, you know, they communicate well. And I'm like, I got these two guys in front of me. It, it's go time. But, um, being able to play behind them, uh, you just learn a lot about how, how to work. Um, they're always working uh, every single day, um, regardless of what it is. Um, they're our leaders on our team. So I just try to, uh, you know, do my best to feed off of them and, um, you know, give them some juice every now and then. But it's been great playing behind those two guys. We'll go to Jeff York with CNN. Hey, man. So uh, our reporter, Coy Wire, played with your dad up in Buffalo, and he said he remembers seeing you running around the locker room when you were like three years old. They were locker mates uh, together. So I just kind of wanted to know what what advantage was that having, you know, your dad that played in league? What kind of advantage did that give you growing up and getting to this level? Yeah, um, a huge advantage. Um, growing up, like I said before, uh, watching my dad uh, – just play the game, I would just do my best to do, you know, whatever he was doing. You know, he had me on the field uh, early on doing ladder drills um, in the backyard, you know, back backpedaling and breaking and doing different drills and things like that early on. Um, and I, I just – I watched how he watched film um, at an early age, and I was able pretty much to see what a pro is like at an early age. And I feel like that's what helped me in my career because I try to simulate the same thing, you know, watching what he did, how he would study film. Every night I do the same thing. And so I feel like um, it, it had a, a great impact on me. Next, we're going to Pete Thamel with Yahoo Sports. Antoine, thanks. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I'm going to have two quick questions. One is, has your, you and your dad ever discussed his Tom Brady interception now that you have uh, intersected career paths with, uh, with Tom? And the second question will be, why do you think scouts missed on you? Yeah, the first question, um, when I first got drafted, yeah, we talked about it. I'm like, yeah, I get to play with Tom Brady. And my dad was like, man, that's the go right there. You're probably about to win you. Way. <laughs> so I was excited, you know, to be able to play with him. And he did talk about how he picked them off once before. And um, can you repeat the second question, please? Sorry, I was unmuted. You were very productive at Minnesota. You were one of the best defensive backs in the country. You made clutch plays, big plays. Why do you what do you think scouts didn't see in you where you slipped into the draft where you did? Why, why do you think the, the scouting process missed on a, on a player like you? Um, to be totally honest, I feel like it was a hype uh, issue, to be honest. Um, I feel like everybody's looking for that prototypical safety, 6'2", 215, uh, big guy. And I feel like since I wasn't 6'2", 
uh, that's probably why most teams passed on me because I feel like uh, everything else I was solid on. So I would say just the height. That's the only thing I could think of. We're to Chris Ryan with WGIR. Hey, hope all is well. Um, Want to get your take on the the Buccaneers defense as a whole. And obviously there's been a lot of talk about Tom Brady as there should be, but do you feel that, you know, in some ways the defense has been the key for you guys, particularly the known commodity that, that Brady is with the offense? Yeah. I mean, the defense is full of um, guys. Um, look at our front seven. Our front seven is ridiculous. Um, on the back end, we're young, but we're still out there making plays. So I feel like the defense is, we have a great defense over here. Go to Spencer Shanman with the last resort. Anton, hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing? I'm doing well. I was just wondering, who are some safeties that you wanted to emulate your game after growing up? Who were some guys that, that you watched uh, when, when, when you were young? And uh, the second part of my question is, is there anyone on the team that does a great Bruce Arians impression? Uh, I'm not sure who does a great Bruce Arians uh, impersonation. Um, I don't I don't think I know anybody that can do one of his. But um, some of the saves I watched growing up were like Ed Reed, um, Earl Thomas. I just loved how both those guys were just deep in the post, and they were sideline to sideline everywhere, straight ball hawks. So I would say Ed Reed and Earl Thomas are the two guys that I watched growing up. We'll go to Joey Knight with the Tampa Bay Times. Antoine, can you just speak to the clairvoyance you and Jordan have developed, just the kind of connection you guys have developed on the field over the course of, like, 19 games? Yeah, um, actually, when I first got down here, he was the first person I met and started working with. Um, we weren't allowed to go to the facility yet, so we just had our own little workouts. He was taking me through a few, basically, like, individual periods. And so um, starting that uh, off early, we built a connection right away, and I felt like um, our experience together as we went through the season only progressed. And so um, it was great being able to uh, play with him. You know, uh, he's also a leader on the team that doesn't get enough credit. Um, he's there. Uh, he helps me with everything uh, as far as communication and just leading. Um, and so it's been great to uh, play alongside him this entire season. Time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Mark Berman now. Antoine, how you doing? Doing well. How you doing? Mark Berman at Fox in Houston. What does it uh, mean to you? And you've touched on this a little, and I got a couple questions. What does it mean to you to have gotten your family's name in the Super Bowl after your father worked so hard to get there and you revenged him against the Saints and now, and now you're there? Now I'm here. Um, it, it means everything. Um, like I said before, my, my father played for 14 years, never went to the Super Bowl. Um, I'm glad at least one Winfield could get in the Super Bowl. And, and that's me. And so um, it, it's been everything. Uh, we talked about it ever since I got drafted about going and being in this moment. And it's just surreal to actually be here. Um, and so I'm just soaking up everything again. But, um, you know, it, it, it'll be a great feeling. How special is it for your dad? My dad was excited. I think I feel like he was more excited than I was. Uh, <laughs> after when we uh, beat Green Bay, he, he was the first person that uh, had called me. And I talked to him and he was out there over there yelling. Uh, screaming, just talking about congratulations and and everything. So I thought he was more excited than I was. Go to Joseph Volp with In the Zone. Hey, Antoine, how you doing? Good, how you doing? So you've really become a leader, even as a rookie on this defense over your first year. And so how do you take that and prepare for a guy like Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey in the biggest stage in the world? Yeah, um, with that, uh, film study. You got to know what they do um, and how they're attacking their uh, opponents. And you pretty much got to take that into consideration when you're going out there and playing. And so you're not uh, caught off guard by anything. And so um, that's the best way I know how to, you know, being able to uh, talk on the field with my corners, with the linebackers and just alerting them before um, things happen from my film study. I feel like that's the best way that you can lead and be able to um, help out all your teammates. Peter Clark with Syracuse University. Hi, Antoine. Uh, Bruce Arians has coached a, a lot of great safeties. He called Tyron Matthew his favorite player he's ever drafted before, and he drafted you this year. What does it mean to you to, to play the safety position and, and kind of bring that position back to prominence in the NFL? 
Yeah, um, it means everything, um, especially being in the system on uh, BA. That's uh, been great. Um, he, he's been moving me around um, in different positions and put me in great positions for me to make plays. And so, um, you know, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm, I'm glad to be here and glad to be in the position that I'm in today. And we'll go to Rafael Haynes with the three point conversion. Hello, Antoine. Rafael from the three point conversion. I know this has been a great season for you. Um, just everything that's happened in this year. When you look at the fact that you're in the Super Bowl now, what really goes through your head as far as, I guess, are you are you nervous? Are you nervous? Are you excited? Do you think like, all right, this is the play I'm going to make? Like, what's going through your head right now, man? Knowing that you at this moment, I'm excited. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there and play. That so I, I'm just super excited right now, um, and I, I don't know words don't even can't even describe how I feel about being being in the Super Bowl. It still feels surreal. It's like the Super Bowl. When you think about the Super Bowl, you're like, it's so much work to get there or get here. And I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm just excited to go out there and play. And our last question today will come from Mark Craig with Minneapolis Star Tribune. Sorry, Antoine, to end it this way, but I, I'm sorry if you answered this, I apologize, but and you made great adjustments in that week 12 game, but in that first quarter, what, as you look back, what happened in that first quarter against the Chiefs? Yeah, um, they made some explosive plays, uh, some money plays on us in that first quarter or that first half. And, um, you know, second half, we made our adjustments and we were in a better position than we were the first half. But, um, yeah, they, uh, they just made some plays. <laughs> That's pretty much all I can say about that first half. All right. Well, that's all the time we've got today. That'll conclude today's media availability of Tampa Bay Buccaneers, safety Antoine Winfield Jr. Antoine, we appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks, y'all.